Good afternoon, this is Mike Palmer with Mike Palmer Homes. Wanted to make a video of a new plan we have. We call it the Tanya. This is the first time we've built it. It was designed specifically for this customer, um, for their needs, but it's a great plan. So we're gonna, be, we're gonna be bringing it out on our website here before too long. A few things, it's just, we just got the windows in. So the windows you see, they're, they're flashed for, uh, that, that's for water penetration. You're not gonna see that plastic on top, that, uh, that polyethyl, polyethylene film on top. That's gonna be for water protection. But a couple things I want to point out. We're going to have a vaulted porch, but if you see over here and right up here, these areas, they've just kind of got a black roof on there. What that's called is snow and ice shield. We're going to be putting a metal roof accent on top of there. But when you do metal roofs in those small areas for just really cheap insurance, we took some of the excess uh, snow and ice shield that we put in the valleys, we put it there. So we almost have two roofs. So underneath that metal roof is another is, a, is another product that can be in a roof in itself for extra protection because with all those complex cuts there, we, it's just an area that small. It's cheap enough to put that second layer under there for extra protection. But the front, we're going to do a mix of board and batten, metal accents, and some stone here, and it's going to be a really nice, really, really pretty uh, exterior. Um, the garage system on this, we call this a tandem garage or some people have called it the toy garage. You have a two-car garage here that you turn in pull in with your vehicles, park your cars. Then there's another vehicle back here for if you want four wheelers or spare car, hobby car, workshop, whatever. And there's a, there's a door out back as well to get to the backyard and the deck and everything. It's kind of a utility door. And also this area here is gonna be, you have room to park the cars and you have a great area for a workbench. Now they're gonna put a utility sink here, wash hands, etc. if you're doing, you know, doing mechanic work. Or, or whatever and then you're gonna have a uh, you can put toolboxes or whatever you want here shelves workbench and we also have a whole house shut off here so that's convenient if you ever need to shut the whole house off or if you're leaving you can just take this you just turn this lever shut the whole house off boom the water's off or if you need to do any work on anything that kills your water so you don't have to go in the crawl space and hassle with it there's a door coming into the house you see it's been freshly insulated so we'll get be able to get a good good uh, view of uh, what the inside of the house looks like. Up here, that's gonna be a pull-down stair. We put some plywood already up there so you have a pre-floored attic. Much easier and cheaper to do now. So they have a platform so they can store some things. But you wanna be careful, because in my house I made that platform huge. The whole room for storage. I ended up storing way too much junk that I wished I would've thrown away years ago. So that was a big job clearing all that out. Anyway, when you come in the house here, it's an area where you could put like a drop zone or a bench for uh, you know, shoes, whatever. You have a laundry room, but the laundry room has its own door so you're not walking through the laundry room. Laundry room also has a utility sink, washer dryer. Um, we're putting hardwood floors in there. When you come in here, you have a utility closet. And this area here is almost like a hallway. Walks across the front. There's your front porch, front door and entranceway. And then you're gonna have, this is gonna be an office. You're gonna have a desk back there, but it's gonna be open. So you're gonna have these two little half walls. So it'll be kind of cool. You'll be able to get a visual, visual look into the office. Anyway, your kitchen's going to be wide open. Now, if you look at this ceiling, this is a vaulted or cathedral ceiling. Okay. But you see out here, we're going to wrap this in cedar and have some faux beams. So you're going to have a really nice wood cedar beam look. A fireplace, floor to ceiling. So you're going to have a real nice focal point with a stone fireplace. And we're probably putting a cedar mantle there. Um, but on this vaulted ceiling with the beams, you can see it runs all the way through to where the kitchen is. So this is going to be your kitchen island. You're going to have like an L-shaped kitchen. Your pantry is going to be over the right, and you're going to have a big kitchen island with a sink. So when you're standing at the sink, you can see the fireplace and the television. But this is way up high. So you're going to have some nice pendant lights coming down. They're going to be long because your ceiling is going to be really high in your kitchen. This whole room is going to have a really grand feel to it. Um, that's going to be your breakfast area over here. And it's got clip corners, like a bay look, kind of like almost that hexagon look for just a little interest there. And then this is going to be hardwood, and you're going to have your, your uh, table here. Now, if you notice, this is all open. You can see in the office, it's, it's very much open concept. But there's only one dining area, so then we're not chewing up a lot of square footage in a dining room. Some people want the dining room, but some people feel they don't use it. So a lot of these house plans, more and more, we're eliminating the dining room. 
um, for the customers that don't want it because they want to use that space somewhere else. It's going to be your screen porch. Now, with the screen porch, this is going to be vaulted and cathedral as well. It's going to have a big open ceiling, and we're going to put a knotty pine tongue and groove. It's going to be really, it's going to really have a regal feel to it. And then we're screen in the porch, and you've got the nice wooded setting out back. Um, we had to take out trees for the septic field, but there's still no shortage of trees here, and it's going to feel really private. The neighbors have a stockade fence, so you're going to have some privacy from your neighbors. So it's going to be a real nice backyard. Um, that there is just a cold, cold air return for our, for our system, for our home system. Now we're going to put a flagstone hearth, and it's going to be a real nice stone, stone facade here. Now the master suite. Let's get the theme of this house. We put a nice big window seat over here. It's going to be a nice, real nice bench seat. So you're going to have. It's almost going to have like another piece of furniture or sitting area in this room. Um, you notice the ceiling is cathedraled. We're going with vaulted. We're still going to put beams here. We're not going to have beams going down the sides like the front, but we're going to be putting a beam, a wrap cedar beam along this peak here. So you're still going to have some of that interest in, in this room. Um, and it's going to have that nice high cathedral ceiling. Um, so you're going to kind of have some of that, almost like that chalet look. Now in the master bath, same thing. You have that vaulted ceiling, which is real nice. This is going to, this shower here, we're going to have glass on the top, but it's what we call a cave shower um, because you walk in, there's going to be no door. And if you walk in here, you walk, enter your shower here and you see this floor is lower because it's going to be sloped. So we, it's going to be what we call a zero entry. There's no curb to trip over. So you come in the shower here, that's where your water is going to come out and you're going to have, they are going to have a, another rain shower. They're going to have dual shower heads here. Then your water sprays on you here, but you don't have any, any door to open and close. You just walk right in, walk right out, and you can put your towel racks over here. So once again, we call it a cave shower or a shower with no door. Um, you're going to have your temperature controls here, which is real nice because you can control your temperature here. Get the water to the temperature you want before you have to step in there. Um, sometimes that can be irritating when you have to walk in, turn the water on, get sprayed with cold water before you get it to the temperature you like. Anyway, so that's going to be really cool. They, these folks did not, they'd rather have this big shower, so they did without the tub. Now you see up here, that's going to be, that's going to be a transom window. They call it transom window. It's up high. Nobody can see in your shower, but it brings in natural light. And it's going to be up above your uh, water nozzle, so it's not going to get a lot of water there. Um, we got recessed can lights up in the ceiling. They'll probably be eyeball lights so that they shine down. But what's nice here, when the steam comes up in the shower, it goes way up high into that uh, vaulted ceiling before it comes down on you. So it, it keeps it up high and not on your mirrors. Um, his and hers vanities here. Here is the commode room. The toilet's going to be there with its own room. And then you have a nice big walk-in closet here. Now, originally this was not going to be a cathedral ceiling, but some of the framer ran it all the way through. So all we need to do is put some 2 by 8s across here to make it a flat ceiling. But the customer said, no, we'll go with it. It's kind of, you know, you have this can continue with that spacious theme, but it's something easy to remedy. But it's kind of like when you make a mistake cooking and you like it better. Uh, you end up liking the dish better, so the mistake worked out in your favor. Um, anyway, we've got two back bedrooms. Over here, that's the main part of the house with the master. That's where most of the focus went. And this particular customer did not need huge be bedrooms for the, the second and third bedroom, but, um, you know, you don't want a two-bedroom house. Um, so... Um, this is going to be like the powder room slash guest bedroom that will have the tub if they have any guests They'll use this bathroom, but this will be the, the second bath and here are the bedrooms We did not make these bedrooms overly large Because nobody's going to be living in them full-time, but they're still not not bad size They're still bigger than a lot of bedrooms that I see out there. So um, they're just not as big as we always do it, but anyway, and uh, we, we, we always run a cable jack and, and wire wire our bedrooms for ceiling fans because you know, it's a lot easier. It's a lot cheaper and easier to do it up front, and most people end up wanting it. Um, just a couple of points here. You see, with insulation, foam is sprayed up there at the top of the top where the sheetrock joins, and that forms a gasket. So if air blows in your soffit, it can't get down behind the sheetrock, and uh, it, it it adds energy efficiency. And you can see on the floor this white powder. This is called that's uh, something we put in the walls. It's called diametaceous earth. That's a natural bug, non-toxic bug repellent. It it physically 
kills bugs. So the idea is there is bugs crawl in the wall. They scratch their exit. This this powder, is, it, it, if you look at it under a microscope, it's silica, but it's very razor sharp. So when they groom themselves, it scratches their exoskeleton, and they die naturally before they build colonies. Now, there's no way. I know it's used in food service, and it is an effective bug control for bed bugs and different things that um, need to be addressed. There's no way I can 100% guarantee you how much it works. But there's no charge for it, and it is cheap insurance because we'd rather not be spraying poisons around pets and kids if we can avoid it. Um, a few other things. You see these metal plates here on the wall? That's where there's the wires or plumbing going through because you don't want to, when you put trim in, you don't want a nail hitting that. It can be a hazard. So uh, that's the idea behind putting those plates there. Um, this is a cold air return. Um, it's in a closet. You lose some closet floor space, but you can still put things on top here. And when it's framed like that, you can stand on it. You've got to get up and reach something. But anyway, that's, well, that's where we try to you put the cold air return so we can kill space. Um, there's one more little closet here we put just because we had the space. And that can be for your vacuum or coats or whatever you want. Anyway, that's it. we got a nice front porch. Oh, with these lots, what's real nice is you, but they, have, they do have a natural area out front where there's nobody's going to build. So you got, you know, pretty view of trees and woods out front, out back, birds, whatnot. And this porch, we also got a cathedral porch up here. And we're going to be putting some cedar columns. And this is going to be a really decorative craftsman style front porch. Anyway, oh, we're going to be putting stone bases on them, the kind of halfway up stone columns. And, oh, another thing we point out. See that piece of three-quarter inch wood? underneath where the door goes, that keeps your door from catching your uh, your welcome mat or your rug in front. That gives you a little space there because it's no fun when you open the door and it catches your welcome mat. Anyway, that's what our house looks like. Um, the Tanya, that's a sneak preview. As we progress with this and we get it finished, we'll put it, be putting out some more videos. Um, the the uh, plan will be coming up on the website soon. Or if you have any interest or you want uh, any further interest or want us to email you a copy, um, just contact us at mikepalmerhomes.com. Thank you for watching.